growing your growth for God. For God, and that, that, that was a blessing. That was a blessing, a, a beautiful time. And yes, guys, my name is Paul. Um, I'm from Venezuela. I've been living in United States for almost three years. And it's been a, it's been a beautiful time this in this country, just learning the word of God and, and being able to study his word. So I'm able to preach and, and to teach you guys, anyone who is needing the word of God. And um, yeah, I've been here for three years. And a little bit of my testimony, uh, I, had a, I had a dinner with the pastors this Wednesday and they asked me to, to give you a little bit of my background and my testimony and my story. So I grew up in a, in a Christian family. My mom, she was a Christian and she was always praying for me. She was always pray, praying for me. But when I was, when I turned 13 years old, I just started to just um, live my life. I just started to, to drink alcohol. I just started to, to be out with my friends, uh, to do things that were not good for me, to do things that are not good for us. But my mom was always right there praying for me, praying and believing in God that one day I was going to be able to believe in him and to serve him. And here I am today. And I used to tell my mom and I used to say that my mom was crazy. I used to say that Christians were crazy. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Years ago, I said that I never wanted to be a Christian. I, I hated how, how they were. But that was my flesh. That was my flesh speaking. That was my spirit. But God was working with me. God was working with me throughout the years. And since I was 13 years old, until my 17 years old, those were four years of a dark life. I was, I was living a dark life, but then praise the Lord, he took me to this country three years ago. I'm 20 years old right now. And it was a time where when I was 17 years old, I was going through a dark life, as I, as I told you, addiction to pornography. And I was in a relationship. And in a toxic relationship, this relationship was leading me to do things that were not pleasing to God. And from nowhere, one day, I just felt that God was calling me to end and stop this relationship, to start following him, following him and just him. But I've never heard the, vo I've never heard the voice of God before that time. So I don't know how. But I started praying and I was praying and praying and praying for a week, always praying every night to God. Hey, what do you want me to do? Are you real? If you're real, tell me something, do something because I want to believe in you, but I don't, I don't, I don't feel you're real. And it was praying, praying, praying for a week until one day he spoke to me through a person in church. It was a brother in my church. and. He came to me and he started speaking from God. Nobody knew about my prayers in this week, but this, this, um, this man started talking to me and I felt the presence of God. I, I felt the voice of God telling me, Paul, what I want you to do is to stop living your old life and I want you to start following me and only me. And at that moment, I will never forget that, guys, when I heard for the first time the voice of God in my life. I was feeling something different. And from that moment, I never, never, never looked back again. From that moment, I decided to be obedient to the Lord. I decided to follow him. I decided to love him, to worship him. And as the pastor said, um, I do music too. I play, I play music. I do worship. And it's a privilege. So from that moment, I just started just following and worshiping the Lord. But my testimony is that my testimony is that I heard the voice of God making a calling to me, pers a personal call in my life. And other than that, that's my life. That's my background. Uh, this is how I, this is who I am. But now let's just, let's just get into the message I believe that, that I've been praying this week 
to give you guys a message from God. Um, there's prayer involved in this message, and I believe that this is going to be really helpful for you. And look, what I'm going to preach today, maybe it's not going to be something that you're going to understand today or you're going to apply today. But what I'm going to be preaching to you this, uh, this evening is going to help you uh, for your future. I know that you will remember this word um, years later. I, I, I know that you will remember this word maybe next week, maybe in one year, two years, but it's going to be a word for the future because it's something that we, we, we need as, as Christians. And that word is coming from a thought that God gave me that there's too many things in this world that at one point they were impossible for men to create. If, you, if I can tell you something, having a laptop, having a computer years ago, maybe was something impossible. Years ago, it was something imp impossible to have a computer, but now we have it. So what that is telling me and telling you that there's nothing impossible for you and I as child of God, as children of God. There's nothing impossible for you and I if we believe in God, because the world, listen to me, the world is trying to tell you and I that there's nothing impossible for us. But I'm here to tell you that, yes, that's right. There's nothing impossible for you and I, but if we do it with God and for God, when we do everything for and with God, there's not going to be anything impossible for you to accomplish. And when I think about impossible things in the Bible, I go to the story of Peter. And, and if you don't know that story, it's about Peter walking on the waters when Jesus walked on the waters as well. And you don't, you don't have to answer me this question, but is it, is it possible for you or for me to walk on the waters? No, it's impossible. It's impossible for us to walk on the waters. For the human being, it's impossible to walk on waters, to walk on air. We're not able to do that. But the Bible is showing me a story about Peter walking on the waters. So if you have uh, your Bible with you or you're taking notes, uh, I'm going to be reading Matthew chapter 14, verses 25 to 30. I'm going to give you um, a few seconds to find that verse. Matthew 14, chapter, uh, chapter 14, verses 25 to 30. And of course, before I read the word of God, I want to pray. So let's pray. Uh, Father God, we honor you. We honor you. We take a moment to pause to give you glory and honor. Thank you, Lord, because you're giving me the privilege to preach to your people. Thank you, Lord, because you have them there in the other side of the screen, Lord, listening to your words. Because I do believe and I pray that they will hear my words, but your words, Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, be in this place. Be in this call. Be you the one preaching to them. Let me decrease so you can increase, Holy Spirit. Speak to us this morning. I do believe that this is a divine appointment, Lord, coming from you to let us know something from your word. Holy Spirit, have your way. And let us learn and grow more and more and more in your precious word. We give you glory and honor, Jesus Christ. And I pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's go to the word. Matthew 14, 25 to 30. It says, Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. I want you to follow me. Jesus is walking on the lake towards a boat. It says, when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. They said, it said a ghost. They were terrified. So imagine that you are in a boat in the middle of the lake, in the middle of waters. And from nowhere, you see Jesus coming towards you. 
that's something crazy for us because as I told you, walking on the waters is something impossible for us to do. But then it says, but Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. So now we see the boat, we are on the waters, Jesus is walking, and then Jesus is, and then Jesus is saying, don't be afraid, it, it, that's me. It's Jesus, your Lord, trusting me. Then it says that Peter, Peter was one of the disciples in the boat. It says, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. So Peter is asking Jesus, hey, if you are that person walking on the waters right now, call me to go to you walking on the water. Then it says that Jesus said, come. I love how Jesus just said, come. Jesus didn't say anything else, just come. It was a simple call. It was a calling in the life of Peter to walk on the waters. So what's happening here is that Jesus is calling Peter to do something impossible. I, I began this, 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 this message telling you how for us, some things look impossible, but for Jesus, everything is possible. And Jesus is calling Peter to do something impossible, which is walking on waters. And then it says that Peter got, got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. Peter, by faith, he went out of the boat and he started walking on the waters. He was already doing something impossible because Jesus called him first. And what I want to tell you today, guys, as I told you, this is a message that is going gonna, is gonna to help you in the future because I do believe that God is going to call you to do some things that are going to look impossible for you. Maybe he's calling you to do anything in church, to do worship, to, be, to preach, to teach, to help, to be in the parking lot, to be wherever, just serving, serving the people. But maybe for you, that look impossible. Maybe it looks impossible for you to be the only Christian in your family. Maybe it looks impossible for you to be the only Christian in your, around your friends. Maybe your friends are not believers. Maybe your family are not believers, but you are. And you are like, God, this look really impossible for me to keep believing in you when everything around me is just against you. But God is asking you and calling you to do something impossible. How you're gonna be able to do everything, how you're gonna be able to, to really believe that anything is impossible for you if you're doing it with God, doing everything by faith. This passage in the Bible is just about faith. Why? Because faith is believing something that you cannot see, that you don't understand, that you don't feel. Why? Because the things that we don't understand, the things that we don't feel, the things that we don't see are impossible things. So God is telling me through this passage, hey, have faith because I'm going to call you to do impossible things in your life why do i say this to you guys because you are young people there's young people in this call we have an entire life in front of us and what's gonna happen is that while while you're walking with jesus christ while you're growing in jesus there's gonna be a moment that god is gonna call you to do something that is gonna look impossible so if you are taking notes and you really want to study this word, because it's really simple, a message about faith is simple. The hard part of this is to apply faith in our lives. So my first point, point number one, is titled, God is going to call you. Point number one, God is going to call you. But when we read this passage again, 
Peter was able to walk on the waters because Jesus called him first. Because Jesus called him first. You are not going to be able, we are not going to be able to do anything in life that looks impossible if God doesn't call you first. So before you do anything in life, make sure that, it, that God called you first to do that. Before you do anything, pray to God. God, is it your will for me to do this? God, do you want me to do this? God, call me to do this and do it by faith. So God is not gonna ask you for something that he hasn't called you first. So God is gonna call you first. Second point, really quick. You are going to have to believe. Second point, you are going to have to believe. Before I explain the second point, I want you to pay attention that I'm using the word going. Why? I'm not saying God maybe is going to call you. I'm not saying you, maybe you will need faith. No, I'm saying you are going to need faith and God is going to call you because I do believe that God create, created you with a purpose. I don't care what's the situation of your family. I don't care what's the situation with your friends. God created you perfectly for a purpose in life. And I'm here to remind, you, to remind you that you are important for God, that you have a purpose and a calling in your life, that God is going to provide every single tool and everything you need. He's going to be your provider. He's going to give you the ideas. He's going to give you the people around you to make anything that he's calling you to do, to make it possible. Because for God, there's nothing impossible for God. So guys, you are going to have to believe. Why, going back to the Bible verse, why Peter was able to walk on the waters? Because he had faith. First, Jesus called him first. Second, he had to apply faith. So he got out of the boat to start walking on the waters by faith. I can imagine myself trying to walk on the waters without faith. So, as I told you, there's going to be a point in your life, believe me and pray for this, that God is going to give you direction. And that's the first point. God is going to call you. The second point, once he calls you, please remember this message. Remember that it's nothing impossible for Jesus. Remember that if he called you, he will prepare you. If he, if he called you, he will take you to the promised land. If God called you, you will be able to walk on the waters. If God called you, you will be able to do impossible things. But now, the third point is something that Peter didn't do. The third point is do not look back. Do not look back. The Bible says, in verse 30, that when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. When Peter was walking on the waters, at one point, he looked to the side. He looked back because he was afraid. He was lacking faith. He was able to walk on the waters, but then he was lacking faith. And he looked to the sides. He looked back and then he fell down. So guys, the key, when God calls you, when you have faith is to keep going, not looking back, not looking back. Because when I told you about my testimony, when I heard the voice of God for the first time in my life, I can tell you that three years ago, I never looked back again. It's been difficult. Yeah, it's been hard, but by faith, I'm walking. Who told you that walking on the waters is an easy thing to do? Walking on the waters is something impossible. So God, again, God is going to call you to do impossible things. You are going to need faith to be able to walk on the waters. But then, please, don't look back. Please, don't look back. And if you do look back, don't lose hope. Because the Bible tells me that when Jesus looked back, 
Jesus still stretched out his hand to help him out. So Jesus is never going to let you down. But guys, don't get to that point. Don't get to that point in life. Just don't look back. Hear the voice of God first when he calls you to do something. Have faith to do whatever he's calling you to do. And then do not look back. That was my message. It's a simple message. I want you to remember that, that there's nothing impossible for you if you have faith and if you don't look back. Please go back to this Bible verse, Matthew 14, 25 to 30. Go back and study it. Meditate on that. Ask the Holy Spirit what he has for you. And talking about callings, talking about callings, I was praying this whole week, and this is important, guys. This is a prophecy from God. I was praying this whole week for God to give me something special, and he's calling someone here in this call, in this call. He's calling someone here in this call, and I don't know why, but he told me he's a 14 years old guy. It's a 14 years old guy that God is calling you to be a pastor. I don't know who he is. I don't know the name, but I do know that God is calling you, my brother, 14 years old. And even if, you, and he, if he's not here, if you have a family member, 14 years old guy, there's a calling in his life to be a pastor. There's a calling in his life to lead more people. There's a 14 years old guy in this call or related to someone in this call that is going to be a pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord for that word because that's not coming from me. But guys, that was my message. Let me just pray out. And I hope you really print this message in your heart forever, forever. So Father God, we give you thanks. We give you glory and honor for your word. We give you glory and honor because when you call us, you are there for us. When you call us, you provide. When you call us, you equip us. Thank you, Lord, because when you do the call, we just have to apply faith and do not look back. That's the only thing we have to do. God, I pray for the journey of every person in this life, in this call. Lord, I pray for this ministry, for the worship team, for the pastors. I pray for everyone in this group, Lord. I pray for everyone in this youth group, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for open doors in their lives, for opportunities, Lord, and I cover each one of them with your holy, precious blood. In Jesus' name, I pray all these things. Amen.